Hello, welcome to Maths with Jay. So in this video we're going to derive the equations of motion for a particle moving in a straight line with constant acceleration. So that's really important that the acceleration is constant. And here we're not going to actually work through any examples, we're just concentrating on deriving the equations. There are two ways of looking at this. Either we could look at the graphs or we could look at using calculus. So we'll start off by using the graph method and then we'll see how we could use calculus. So let's just write down what the variables are. So the variables are s, u, v, a and t. And let's just write down what each of those represents. So the S represents displacement, so that's a bit like distance travelled, but it takes into account direction. U represents initial velocity, so again this is a bit like speed, but it also involves direction. V, final velocity, A, acceleration, and T, time. So we've got a particle moving with a certain acceleration in a certain time, it's displaced by a certain amount and it starts with an initial velocity and ends with a final velocity. And the units with, that we use here for these equations are metres and seconds. So that means that the displacement will be measured in metres, the velocities in metres per second, acceleration metres per second squared, and time will be measured in seconds. So those are our variables. And the simplest way to have a look at how to get the equations is to have a look at a graph of velocity against time. So the particle is going to start at time t equals zero with an initial velocity of u, and it will take time t, the final velocity will be v. So the important thing here is that because we know that the acceleration is constant, this graph is a straight line. And the acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, so it's the gradient of this graph. So that means that we can write down the acceleration A in terms of the initial velocity, the final velocity and the time. So looking at this graph, we know that the gradient of the graph is the vertical distance v minus u, and it's divided by the horizontal distance of t minus 0, or just t. And that gives us our first equation. It's usual to multiply across by the t and to add on the u to make v the subject, so this equation is v equals u plus at. So our first equation. So let's just move the equation to one side. So we've used the gradient of the graph to write down the acceleration. And what we're going to do next is still using the same graph is look at the area under the graph to give us the displacement. So we can see that the area of this graph is fairly straightforward because this shape is a trapezium. What we could do is just draw or sketch the trapezium to see what's going on. So here I've just drawn the, uh, the trapezium roughly and we can see that the, uh, the horizontal distance between the two parallel lines is t, the height of the shorter line is u and the height of the longer line is v. And we know the formula for the trapezium, for a trapezium, it's going to be, so let's write it down here, it's half the sum of the parallel sides, so that's u plus v, multiplied by the distance between them, so that's t. And this gives us our second equation of motion. So you'll notice that both the equations that we've got here involve four variables, so each one doesn't involve one of the variables. So equation one v equals u plus at doesn't involve the displacement and equation 2 s equals a half u plus v times t doesn't involve the acceleration and what we can do is combine these to eliminate each of the variables in turn so that we end up with five equations 
each of them will have four variables and each not having one of the variables involved. So let's move this equation over and derive the other three from these two. So the simplest thing we can do to start with is to simply substitute v from equation 1 into equation 2. So that's going to give us a half u and then instead of the v we've got u plus a t. And then that, so another bracket there and the t. So you can see what we've done there is we have eliminated v. So the only variables we've got now are s, u, a and t. This just needs a bit of tidying up. So we have got a half u plus u is 2u, a t and then a t outside the bracket. And then multiplying out a half times 2u times t. So that's going to be u t and then a half a t times t, so that will be a half a t squared. So our third equation is another equation for the displacement, but this time it's without the v. So s is u t plus a half a t squared is our third equation. Um, what shall we eliminate next? I know what we could do. We could make u the subject of equation one, and then we could do, we could substitute that into equation two, and that will um, give us a very similar formula for s, but in terms of v instead of u, and the t and the a, and the a will be there too. Okay, so let's just get rid of this. Okay, so equation one gives u as v minus a t, doesn't it? And then we're going to substitute that into, so we get s is a half, and what we're going to do now is instead of writing u, we're going to write v, let's put that in brackets to make it really obvious what we're doing, we're going to write v minus a t, so that's the u, and then we've still got the other v multiplying the t. So that's equal to a half. So we've got v plus v, so 2v minus a t times t. So multiplying out a half times 2v times t is going to be vt. And then we have minus a half a t times t, so minus a half a t squared. So you can see that this is very similar to the previous one, except that we've got a v instead of the u and a minus instead of the plus. So we can number that four. So what do we need to do next? Um, well, all of those equations have got t in them, so what we need to do is to eliminate t between 1 and 2. So what I'm going to do is make t the subject of equation 1 and then substitute that into 2. So let's give ourselves some space. Okay, so using equation 1 we're going to be able to write t in terms of the other three variables there. So t is v minus u over a and then we're going to substitute that into our second equation. And that will give us the half u plus v stays the same. But instead of the t, we've got v minus u over a. Um, so what I'm going to do here is bring out the a with a 2, so 1 over 2a. Then I'm going to rewrite u plus v as v plus u so that it's obvious that when I multiply v plus u by v minus u, what we're going to get, so think of difference of two squares, and hopefully you'll see why I've done that, so that v plus u times v minus u is v squared minus u squared, otherwise just multiply those two brackets out, and you'll see that when you multiply v by minus u and u by v, those two things cancel out, so we've got something which we could rearrange a bit. We can multiply both sides by 2a to get rid of the fraction there. 
and we usually write this one with v squared as the subject. So we've got v squared, adding u squared to both sides, v squared is u squared plus 2as. So that is the fifth equation. So you can see that we have got five equations. Shall we write them all one after the other? Okay, so you can see that each of these equations does not contain one of the variables. So the first one doesn't contain s, second one doesn't contain a, third one doesn't contain v, the fourth one doesn't contain u, and the last one doesn't contain t. So in general, what happens in um, questions that involve these equations is that you are given three variables and you need to find a fourth one. So the usual thing is to write down S, U, V, A and T, write down which ones of those you're given, which one you want to find and which one you don't want to, to know about. Put that to one side, cross it out, leave it out and then work out which one of these equations you want. Um, I did say I would also go through the alternative method for finding these uh, equations, so let's look at that now. So the other method uses calculus and we would start off by writing down the uh, acceleration A is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. So if you've done some calculus, you'll know that means you can write this as A is dV by dt. And then by the fundamental theorem of calculus, you therefore know that V can be written as the integral of A with respect to time, so A dt. And it's really important to remember that A, the acceleration, is constant because then it's very simple to integrate this. We just multiply A by T and remember our constant of integration. And we know that when T is equal to zero, the velocity is equal to U. So we can see that the constant turns out to be U c is equal to u. So that means that v is equal to at plus u, or as we've written it earlier on, v is u plus at. So there's our equation one. And then we would go on to say, just as a is dv by dt, v is ds by dt, because velocity is the rate of change of displacement with respect to time and again we can say as earlier that this is equivalent to saying that s is the integral of v dt just as we said earlier on that v was the integral of a dt and we know that here v is u plus a t And then we just integrate, remembering that u and a are constants. So this gives us ut plus a times a half t squared. So that's a half a t squared plus, um, I'm going to put a d there instead of c. It's not a very good d, is it? Okay, that's better. The, the reason I've used d is just to show that this isn't the same as the previous uh, c in the previous integral. So let's again look at our initial conditions. So we know that at time t equals zero, the displacement is zero. So substituting that in gives us that d must also be zero. So this time we get that s is equal to ut plus a half a t squared. So you can see that this time around we've derived what we called earlier on equation three. But you could still use these two equations to derive the other three. So next time we'll actually look at using some of these equations.